How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Sebastian Telfair was one of the biggest high school basketball stars of all time. From being on the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine, projected to be an NBA star, the 6 foot point guard had all the talents in the world, never lived up to his expectations, and off the court just couldn't stay out of trouble. Let's take a look back at the downfall of Sebastian Telfair. Telfair is sentenced to three and a half years in prison. After a disappointing NBA career, will now be facing heavy consequences for his actions. Officially hit rock bottom on Monday, August 12th, the former high school phenom was condemned for illegal gun possession. After being arrested in New York in 2017, NYPD discovered weapons of firearms and ammunition in his vehicle. Was convicted of second degree criminal possession of a weapon. Just 15 years ago, Telfair had the whole world ahead of him, destined to become one of the best point guards, the Lincoln High School legend lived in the Surfside Gardens project. Growing up, he watched his older cousin NBA star Stefan Marbury play in the NBA and from a very young age, that was Young Bassey's dream. Before playing a single game in high school on July of 2000, Young Telfair was invited to the annual ABCD camp in Farley Dickinson University in Jersey, where he gathered the highest ranked high school players in the country. That night at practice, despite his young age, he was already one of the best prep players in the country, even found himself matched up against 6'6 freshman from Akron by the name of LeBron James. Never backed down and had any doubt, the height was simply undescribable, was the king of Coney Island during his teenage years had all the skills in the world, attracted audiences from all over, even huge celebrities like Jay-Z and Derek Jeter paid their respects and came out to see the New York City high school legend, being a household name from word of mouth alone and had all the tools claiming he'd be better than his cousin Stefan Marbury, famed as the anointed child. His lack of size didn't matter, since he was insanely fast and quicker than anybody on the court, nobody had a chance to stay in front of him. Combined with his charismatic and infectious smile, everything was lovable about him early on. Having a lot of flair in his game with incredible vision and constantly finishing at the rim anytime he wants as a junior led Lincoln to their first state championship in 24 years. His hype during the pre-social media era was arguably as big as what Zion was a couple years ago. Graced it on the cover of Sports Illustrated, Watch Me Now, talked about as one of the best prospects to the pros even before finishing high school, Young Bassey and LeBron James were about to take over and be the stars of the future. Despite not playing against NBA level competition yet and dominating high schoolers, Telfair made his case when him and older cousin Stefan Marbury went at it one on one on the playground projects, a physical battle where Sebastian schooled his older cousin, an NBA all-star at the time, with the whole neighborhood watching. Made even more of a name for himself, dominating the summer showcase at Rucker Park against NBA stars in Kenyon Martin and Richard Jefferson right before his senior year. Averaged over 33 points, 9 assists his senior year at Lincoln, finished as New York City High School all-time leading scorer and All-American. Being the number 6 recruit in the nation, winning 3 straight New York City PSAL championship, the first team in NYC to do so. With many scouts and college coaches recruiting, it appeared that Louisville was the favorite in landing Telfair, where Bassey committed on October of his senior year, head coach Rick Patino believed the six foot point guard would benefit greatly one year in college due to his lack of size coming to the pros as a teenager. The smallest player in those years to make the jump from high school to the NBA was six foot five inch Deshaun Stevenson. NBA personnel experts believe Telfair should go to college. One of the weaknesses in his game was his inconsistent jumper, a huge decision that would impact his life forever. Deciding to take his talents to the NBA or play at Louisville, his family lived in the Surfside Gardens for years, one of the most dangerous areas in New York City. Young Bassey was bound to make millions, Desperately needing to get his family to a safer area, on February 8th of 04, three men were shot in the elevator of the apartment he was living in. Two were killed. Telfair being good friends with the two murder victims simply didn't want to put his family there much longer. Having more friends killed than he can count, it only made him concentrate more on his game and getting better. Knowing he had to get his family out of the apartment as soon as he can before it was too late, Telfair announced his intentions to jump to the NBA, received instant fame. After after declaring for the draft, signed a sneaker contract with Adidas worth 5 years 10 million, before being selected 13th overall by the Portland Trailblazers in 04, gladly being able to take care of his family. But that shoe money made him feel like he's already made it to glory before
before playing a single NBA game. With all eyes on the potential star point guard, his flaws began to show very quickly in the NBA. Since he was much more athletic and quicker than everybody else in high school, his size at 6 foot 165 pounds didn't translate. Everybody was bigger and just as athletic. After averaging 6.8 points, 3.3 assists in 68 games his rookie season, his jump shot just never improved. Shot under 40% his first two seasons, but made progression, averaging 9.5 points his second season. But off the court troubles hurt him. Was caught carrying a loaded gun in his carry-on back on a team flight. The Blazers had enough and traded him to Boston, where he barely developed, still a poor shooter, didn't play as much, and got into more off the court troubles. After his car was pulled over in a traffic stop for speeding on a suspended license, police found an unregistered handgun in his car. The point guard said he didn't have a reason to have a gun, just having it being dumb. A bad move all around, combined with the disappointing start, the NBA simply won't have much patience for guys who continues to make stupid mistakes. His defense and shooting continue to be poor. If he would have played better instead of getting into trouble, the Seas could have traded Rondo instead of him, and having a chance to play with Pierce, Allen, and KG together might have changed the direction of Telfair's career. Unfortunately, his career would continue to be underachieving, bounced around constantly, spent two seasons with Minnesota, was involved in that Garnett trade, moved to the Clippers, the Cavs, back to Minnesota, where he saw Rondo win a title with Boston, becoming an all-star and establishing himself as one of the best young point guards. Rondo was everything Telfair was supposed to be. Being too inefficient with too many holes in his game, he was nothing but a backup point guard. From a kid who was treated like a god in high school, to thinking he had all the answers before he heard the questions, to getting that Adidas bread as a teenager, the early fame combined with the unfortunate incidents in the Surfside projects all had a huge effect on why he didn't excel like he was supposed to on the hardwood. From the times with Portland, under head coach Nate McMillan, many players looked at him differently. Given all the hype and franchises at the time didn't have much sufficient resources to guiding teenage pros. With the league not really set up for 19 year olds to succeed and be relied upon as the franchise player to lead a struggling team, Telfair ended up being a journeyman, played for 8 total teams, was never considered a bad teammate, played with Phoenix, Toronto and OKC. His last NBA game was November 26, 2014, at 29 years old, ended with unfulfilled promises after 10 seasons in the National Basketball Association, never averaging more than 10 points in any season, shot 39% from the field for his career, simply couldn't put it all together, spent the next couple seasons overseas in China, and sadly, Telfair simply couldn't stay out of trouble, couldn't get away with the issues surrounding his earlier days growing up in Coney Island. Approaching the morning of June 11, 2017, Telfair and his teenage cousin were stopped by police driving without a headlight combined with the smell of marijuana. Authorities found semi-automatic pistols, a semi-automatic rifle, a ballistic vest, hundreds of additional bullets and weed, convicted on a charge of second degree criminal possession. Not only was his basketball career in jeopardy, but his life was headed towards the wrong direction. Making matters worse, the 2017 incident wasn't the last of Telfair's troubles. In January of 2018, TMZ reported his wife obtained an emergency restraining order after him, alleging he became increasingly hostile and violent claiming he bashed the front windshield of her car, worried about his mental health, even saying he threatened to kill himself. She gave police the photo of the guns confiscated from Sebastian during the arrest. Having more problems to add, TMZ Sports also obtained he never paid his bill to the credit card company he owed over $43,000. Absolutely shocking. After making more than $19 million during his 10 years in the NBA, fighting for his freedom, things could not have been any worse. Facing between 3.5 to 15 years behind bars, during the sentence on Monday, August 12th, 15 summers passed since his legendary high school days, going from heaven to hell, from exceptional to no exception, from top of the world to rock bottom. Telfair will be serving three and a half years behind bars with a mandatory sentence required by law and accountable for the unlawful conduct. The 34 year old will be facing the toughest times of his life. The guns he purchased were all legally licensed in Florida, but not in New York. Having a tragic ending is more than likely Telfair's basketball career is over. Destined for greatness, having so many resources and so much hype with so many people invested in him, cheered for him, and believed in him. And yet, 15 summers later, 
the Brooklyn natives being led away in handcuffs. Getting punishment for a crime nobody got hurt, his poor decisions with the law will cost him three and a half years of his life he will never get back. Admitting the worst thing that could have happened to him was the Adidas money before coming into the league and not taking advice from veteran players, not being as hungry after being super successful, Telfair will be 37 years old when he gets out of prison. The hope is he'll get some good guidance, be able to bounce back to be a better person, stay away from trouble, learn from his past experiences, and do all the right things. And that is the tragic downfall of Sebastian Telfair. We'll just have to wait and see how he bounces back. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.